So uh, let's get into the introduction. Um, and this sets up the problem, the gap, and the research question. And we're going to see some of the, some of the similar things there. It should review the current state of research on the problem. Right? That's kind of the main bit of, uh, 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 of the introduction. And sets the objectives of the paper. And it's kind of your self-assessment of, of what, you've, what you set out to achieve. It has to be achievable, and it has to be done in your paper, right? So the thing that you're trying to do in this paper should be the thing that you do. Um, and one of the things that I like to, to point out is that you should really avoid what's called the straw man strategy, right? Do people know what a straw man is? Do people know, know that term? Right. So a straw man is a, a, a term that they use that people put something up and then they punch it down. But it's not actually a real argument, it's just a piece of straw that they put up only to knock down. And it happens a lot in, uh, in writing. I, I, interestingly, I see it a lot in the social sciences when, for example, a qualitative paper will come out and the first thing that they'll do is say why quantitative research is so bad. And then, so therefore we've done qualitative work. But that actually has nothing to do with their paper. That's not important at all. They're just setting something up to do that. And I had a nice example of this when I, I, I published a paper a few years back, and I, I was working on it with, uh, with some colleagues. And this was uh, uh, another one, I showed you guys that meta-analysis where we compared population density and, and uh, distance to market. We'd done one a couple of years before where we compared population density and uh, people's level of, of sort of socioeconomic development. And Shell showed this really, really, really clear trend with socioeconomic development. Beautiful. And so I kind of went into this draft and was really about how wrong all these neo-Malthusian people were. And um, one of my co-authors says, basically, this whole thing is designed, the introduction is designed as a straw man. You've just set this thing up that you're then batting down realize that most of the people that are going to be reviewing this are the people that you've just batted down. They're the people that actually, people that are going to review this are nine times out of ten going to be the one that thinks that population is the issue. Can you reframe it so that you're not batting them down but rather standing on their shoulders? And that paper sailed through review when I took those comments on board. I wasn't creating this false dichotomy in there. I wasn't creating this false narrative about the bad people that think population density is the problem or you know I see this a lot with this like amorphous person that doesn't understand development but is doing development so they set up this narrative or this straw man of some amorphous thing that is doing the wrong thing and then I'm gonna come in and do the right thing that's actually a, a very it's not a very constructive way to set up your argument because chances are you're pissing somebody off and that person is probably your reviewer so your probability of getting it through review is low, but it's also actually not really recognizing the way science works. Like people do do stuff on population density and that helps inform part of the process in, the, in, in my work. So try not to use this sort of straw man strategy in your introduction. And it took me many years, took me probably about five years, four or five years uh, of publishing to realize that that's actually a really unhelpful strategy. But it's the one that's used extremely frequently. Yeah, so be constructive, right? Don't try to don't try to put people on the back foot. You know, is there somebody there that could be reading this the way that you're writing it, that you're trying to, you know, take their agenda out from under the rug? And could you reconstruct that to make it inclusive of that, that they have ideas and that's part of the discourse and what you're doing is clarifying this discourse a little bit. So my recipe for an introduction. Um, the first is set the context and develop a clear problem or issue statement. And you know, one example might be coastal communities are particularly at risk from the impacts of changing climate. That's a, that's a problem that we have there. <clears throat> Second, review the relevant literature and theory. Now, I think it's really important though to do this thematically rather than what I would call like chronologically, or you know, like I hate it when it's so and so found this and another person found that, and you know, a lot of sort of literature reviews are about each study and what each study found. 
That's a terrible way to find a gap. I think you should go back when you look at those, maybe write it down that way originally on the right board and then say, well, what do these studies have in common and what do these studies have in common? So you can get broad themes in the way that this problem has been approached, right? So I've just given an example from a previous uh, uh, a study, uh, a previous uh, workshop that we did. So Martinez and Ortiz, 1999, argue that enforcement alone through MPAs, marine protected areas, uh, may not serve the purpose of conserving marine habitats, hence the need for educational programs to bring shifts in attitudes towards management. Right. Okay. Well, so here, the emphasis is on the fact that so-and-so said something, rather than why they said it or what the substance of, of that argument was, right? I don't know Martinez and Ortiz, so I don't really care whether they argue about that, right? That doesn't mean anything to me. And the fact that scientists are having a debate isn't worthy of any room in your argument, because scientists always debate these things, right? The fact that there's a debate isn't important, because there's always a debate, right? What is the debate about? Get right to the heart of it, right? Explain what the issue is, rather than the fact that there is an issue, right? So. Um, yeah, provide the substance of the argument, not just the fact that there is an argument. So the third bit is finding a gap in the existing literature that you're going to fill and pose this as your research question, right? Um, pose very clear and succinct research questions. And then briefly describe how your study will fill that gap. So those are the, sort of, uh, the, the four bits. Now, you want your paper to be accessible to a large range of potential readers. So can you pose your research as a theoretical question in which you're using a particular lens to view this problem? Right? Can you do it so that it's not about your place, it's not about your specific issue, that it's about the broader theory, it's about the broader problem, and what you're doing is you're finding that whatever floodplain fisheries in Bangladesh are the perfect way to investigate whatever theory or problem it is, right? Um, you can make it attractive to a much wider audience if you can do that. And one question I often have is, can you not mention the system or the place until the very, very end? You know, until after you pose that research question and you start talking about what you're going to do about it, can you then bring it up? Because if you can, chances are you're constructing it in a way, you're constructing this problem in a way where it's a theoretical issue that you're addressing and it's going to be interesting to a much wider range of people. If your paper starts with, in Kenya, then you realize that that's not going to be interesting to that many people. Right? So, you know, sometimes work really is place-based, right? There's a lot of cultural geography and anthropology that's about place, and it's really important work, right? And that's okay to have place-based work. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with place-based work, but recognize that it's probably of more interest to people interested in that place, right? And choose a journal that's appropriate for that, right? So, um, yeah, and again, if it's about a particular species and it's only relevant to that species, that's okay. But you're going to have to pick a really specific journal that's interested in that species, right? Um, so there's one thing that's kind of helped me a lot in, uh, in the way that I've, I've written. And that's after you've described how you're going to fill that gap, can you then have a background and study sites section? And you know, it's not all journals that do this, but in some places it's appropriate to have a study site or social context section that happens before the actual methods, right? It's kind of after the introduction, the main bit where you've posed that research question and you've said how you're going to answer it. And this is a lot of the information that I think a lot of junior scientists almost always make the entire focus of the introduction is the study sites and social context, but it shouldn't be. But having this as a separate section really actually, when I discovered that you could do this, it actually changed the way I write. 
Because all of that stuff that I used to write about, you know, in Papua New Guinea and blah blah blah, all that used to be the first things that I said. And then I realized, actually, let me put that right in the end. It's all really important stuff. You have to know how customary management systems work there. You have to know about tenure. You have to know about governance. All these things are important for understanding the paper, but they don't, they aren't important for understanding the research question that I'm doing. So then you can have this study sites and social context section, which fills in a lot of that background material, but doesn't get in the way of your research question and your gap. And this has allowed me to sort of transform my research into question-driven research that isn't really about just one specific place. 